that to the end and say that there was a reason that happened. It's something that can change a family's life forever. A place where life is measured by minutes and hours for the sickest babies. I've been here at the NICU 31 years, so, um, and there's just some kids who just, there's just some of them that just hold a special place in your heart. Tonight, in a News Channel 20 special, we take a closer look into babies born too early and the efforts to make sure families can bring them home. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Stacey Skryzak. Tonight, we're bringing you stories of hope and miracles. Every year, hundreds of thousands of babies in the U.S. are born premature. Chances are, you know someone who has spent time in the NICU with their baby. Maybe even you were a preemie. Right there, that's me, 10 years ago, holding two of my triplets. That's Peyton and Parker, our son. In honor of Prematurity Awareness Month, we're shedding light on what happens behind hospital walls. Well, tonight we're going to show you the life saving measures to help the sickest and smallest babies. And we're going to introduce you to children who were once given a slim chance of survival, now thriving years later. But first, we start within the walls of the neonatal intensive care unit, often known as the NICU. Within these hospital walls is a special place for babies in need of extra care. It was kind of hard for me to realized that she was going to be up here more than I was going to spend time with her down there. Born weighing just over three pounds. Big old stretch. Mm -hmm. Baby Cora was whisked away to the neonatal intensive care unit while mother Ariel was a floor below in postpartum recovery. It's an experience, honestly. <laughs> it's sad that when we have to put her back in there and but we can put our arms through there and hold her and hold her hands and stuff like that. This is life in the NICU at St. John's Children's Hospital in Springfield. Private rooms offer state of the art care for babies who call it home for a few days, weeks or even months. Whether it's quiet, whether it's an environment that allows parents to go through the NICU in their own privacy or whether it's a situation where the babies need a lot of an attention because of uh, an acute illness. It's that extra attention that baby Weston needed as he was immediately taken to the NICU due to respiratory issues. But for mom Brianne, the emotional roller coaster is well worth it if it means a healthy baby. It's amazing, um, especially when he smiles at me and he knows that it's mom. So yeah, it's, it's a blessing that he's hopefully going to be able to go home soon. And for the nurses and doctors who treat these babies, watching life come full circle is the best part of the job. And I find uh, myself coming across unexpectedly a, a family that I helped to take care of years down the road and, and seeing that child thrive and, and seeing um, uh, how happy and grateful the parents are. Hundreds of babies call the NICU home every year at St. John's Children's Hospital. A few years ago, the hospital unveiled a nearly $20 million renovation, which more than doubled the size of the NICU. The unit now has single family rooms where parents can stay overnight, as well as a family lounge. And part of that renovation includes special rooms for what's called couplet care. Mothers who are recovering are able to have a bed in the same room as their NICU baby instead of recovering a floor below. St. John's is one of only a few hospitals in the entire country to have this type of room in their NICU. Well, each year, one in 10 babies in the U.S. is born prematurely. So what classifies a baby as a preemie? Well, a premature baby is born before 37 weeks of pregnancy. The early or in pregnancy a baby is born, well, the more likely they are to have health problems. Another term often used by doctors is micro preemie. That's a baby born between the 26th week of pregnancy or weighing less than 28 ounces. Now, according to the March of Dimes, more than 10% of babies were born premature in the U.S. Every year, the organization, they give a grade to each state when it comes to the health of moms and babies. And it turns out there's a lot of work that needs to be done. A new report shows a troubling trend. The March of Dimes puts out grades uh, and, and really the country is at, in a really bad position at a D plus. Uh, and that is really you know, where we sit and the landscape is. And it's not any better on a local level. Illinois receiving the same grade as the country in March of Dimes annual report on preterm birth rates. 
A D plus is never a good grade and the way I look at it is a way for us as a state to, to improve the care of our patients and decrease preterm delivery. So what's behind the high rate? Dr. Elizabeth Chereau with March of Dimes says one reason is the lack of prenatal care in areas known as maternal care deserts. We know that in, that increases inadequate prenatal care. We know that chronic conditions are higher in those places. Uh, and all of that contributes to the worsening outcomes uh, that are happening for moms. Here in Illinois, there are other disparities that also factor in. So one is socioeconomic. Um, we have an increased uh, drug use, especially methamphetamine, and that clearly increases the risk for preterm delivery. As states use this report card to look at ways to make positive changes, Dr. Robert Abrams says it comes down to access for patients. We need to find a way via telemedicine or uh, these mobile units where we actually as providers, whether you're a nurse midwife, a nurse practitioner, a physician, we need to all team up together and, and reach out to our patients to make uh, prenatal care more accessible for them. And a healthy mom leads to a better chance of a healthy baby. We need as a country to really focus here um, and, and realize moms make most of the decisions uh, for families and realizing that if we don't support them, then we're not supporting the whole family. Now, another red flag for Illinois, racial disparity. The March of Dimes report card shows the preterm birth rate for black children is 15%. Black women in Illinois have a 54% higher chance of delivering a baby prematurely when uh, compared to white women. So we clearly have to address this as a state. Dr. Abrams says it comes to access to prenatal care. Instead of relying on patients coming to them, the medical team needs to be able to reach out to mothers. Now to see the full report card for Illinois and across the country, just head to over to our website, newschannel20.com. Well, when you have a baby in the NICU, it's hard to imagine life getting back to normal. And that was the case for a Petersburg couple who gave birth to twins at 25 weeks gestation. Meet Millie and Maeve. They're now eight months old. The identical twins, they've come a long way since being born in March, three months premature. The girls weighed just under two pounds each when the Yurish family began their long journey in the NICU. I, and I still believe that to that day, this day, that there was a reason that happened. And um, it's, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of times where you could get caught up in the moment of like, mm -hmm. well, why, you know, why, um, like, why did this happen? After 113 days of growing, Millie and Maeve graduated from the NICU together. The two have been home for just over four months now, and despite being born early, they have very few lingering health concerns. Well, still to come, reaching out to new moms, a closer look at the efforts to help mothers who may be struggling after giving birth. Plus, an emotional reunion as two preemies return to where their friendship started a decade ago. And we've had a little bit of rain so far, but this is just a sample of what's coming our way. Coming up, I'll let you know how much rain to expect. Welcome back. Mothers are so busy caring for their child, often putting their baby before themselves. But so many women experience mental health challenges during and after pregnancy. We spoke with Dr. Elizabeth Chereau, the president of March of Dimes, about what's being done to address the mental health crisis. There is that grief in the NICU, whether you lose a baby or you just give birth early. Um, what talk about the importance of paying attention to the mental health of, of the mother? Yeah. So, Stacey, postpartum time frame, whether it is you know you've just been given a diagnosis and now you know 48 hours you have a baby that you may be in the neonatal intensive care unit, or you may have a loss, um, or you know, you're all of a sudden dealing with intense situations that you're never prepared for. And it doesn't matter whether you've known about an out, you know, a possible outcome over a long term or short term, when it's there in front of you, the impact of that can be long lasting. Uh, so one is we need patients and moms and their support to ask for help, but also for us as providers to ask how one each other are doing. We know that mental health and that um, isn't extraordinarily important. We've looked at the data and we know that those are in, that's a place where we can have a big impact. I think that I think oh. it comes down to, you know, being OK, that it, it's OK, knowing the mother that it's OK to not be OK and it's OK to ask for help. Yeah, 
it, it is okay to not be okay. We've done a fantastic pilot that we have going on in Washington DC in our um, and Northern Virginia in our Nova NICU family support where we actually screen moms at the bedside and their support person. So, and we screen them for you know anxiety, depression, um, and even suicide. And it's an amazing program that we have found that it's okay to answer, and it's within the privacy, right, of being answered these questions. And we're able to, um, the hospitals we're partnering with are able to get support for these families right where they are. And it's okay to not be okay. Wise words. There is help out there for mothers. We want to pass this along to you. The National Maternal Mental Health Hotline. It offers support 24 hours a day. We have that number there on your screen. It's 1-833-TLC-MAMA, M-A-M-A. Well, coming up after the break, bringing friendship full circle, the emotional reunion as my daughter and one of her best friends return to the NICU that saved both of their lives. And November could be ending up on a very wet note. We could see some real soakers. Stick around. I'll be tracking out our next weather. Welcome back. It's a special friendship born from a time when life was mixed with hope and tragedy. Back in 2013, I had triplets, but two of our babies died within two months of birth. And for those of us who experience life in the neonatal intensive care unit, it's a roller coaster of emotions. But thanks to a unique bond, life has come full circle in more ways than one. In a place where life is measured by days or even hours. We have been friends for weeks. These two girls have overcome the odds. I need to multiply 20 times 7, and I need to add seven zeros to the end. Meet my surviving triplet, Peyton, and her oldest friend, Lindy. The two born on the edge of viability, just three days apart. And nurse Dee Dee Stewart was there for all of it. I've been here at the NICU 31 years, so, um, and there's just some kids who just... There's just some of them that just hold a special place in your heart. Nurse Didi was on duty the night Lindy was born, and she remembers vividly meeting my husband the night our triplets arrived at 22 weeks gestation. My babies are sick. My wife's sick. Are they all going to be here with me? And um, yeah, that's rough. But um, I remember us supporting him so he could support you. Weighing just over one pound each, our tiny babies were too fragile to be touched. And in a time when we felt helpless, Lindy's mom, Katie, came into our lives. I just kind of was in tunnel vision at that time and didn't know who I could talk to or what I could say. And um, we became fast friends once we started talking. It's that unique bond NICU parents share that brought us together. The highs and lows of the NICU, um, unless if you go through it, you don't know. But then when you connect with people, and you become part of their journey, you travel that high and low with them along with your own path. And that path continued long after our babies graduated from the NICU. They're happy, healthy, Andre 10 year olds. Holy cow, 10. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Now 10 years old, Lindy and Peyton are back visiting the NICU. We, are, we were sick, we were very sick. Yeah, very sick. But this time with a special message for those doctors and nurses who saved their lives. Thank you. Thank, for, you. thank you for back then when you used to take care of us. It just meant the world to me. While busy schedules mean these two don't often see each other, it makes these reunions that much sweeter. I never see her, so that's why I love it so much. I get to see my best friend. They are the sweetest. Well, my daughter Peyton, she spent about four months in the NICU at St. John's Children's Hospital. Her friend Lindy there, she spent nine months there. And while both girls, they faced years of medical and developmental challenges, they are now perfectly healthy 10 year olds with no delays. Now your storm team weather with Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke. Good evening, everyone. Well, the day may have started off with a lot of sunshine, but boy, how quickly things have turned around. Now we've got some rain showers lifting up across central Illinois, mainly light rain so far, but there's a big surge of moisture that's going to be coming up from Missouri, and that will eventually target central Illinois. As we look outside right now, there is some light rain coming down for Springfield. We're sitting at 48 degrees and our temperatures fairly uniform, mid to upper 40s all across the board. 
As we look ahead though for the rest of the evening hours, if you are venturing out, running errands, maybe heading out for dinner, definitely keep that umbrella nearby because we'll be seeing temperatures again in the 40s and the rains will start to pick up in intensity later on for this evening. And more sloppy weather too as we kick off the new month of December. Rain showers will be particularly heavy for the morning hours, then starting to taper off though during the afternoon. But the temperature's not too bad. We'll be topping out close to 50 once again for tomorrow. Here's our big weather map, and our weather maker continues to be this cold front pressing in from the west. That's going to be sparking off more rain showers. So we'll have the brunt of the rain coming in overnight tonight into Friday. Then after that, just some limited rain chances as we head towards the weekend. As we track things out, some scattered showers right now. Notice how the rain that will start to pick up in aerial coverage and in intensity as we go towards around midnight tonight. And the rain really continues to overspread the area, making for a very soggy morning commute for Friday morning. We'll still have a chance to see some lingering showers perhaps during the afternoon, but the by and large, most of the heavier rains will be taking place for the morning hours. Then things will start to taper off and calm down later by Friday afternoon and certainly some calmer weather too by the weekend. But the rain, well, it's going to be pretty heavy, we think. Anywhere from an inch, maybe upwards to an inch and a half of rain for some of us. So really some soakers coming in, especially overnight tonight. Bottom line, definitely keep those umbrellas nearby. Lows tonight dropping down to 42. Tomorrow topping out near 50. And the weather could be a little bit unsettled for the weekend. Maybe some late evening showers for Saturday night into Sunday morning. But overall for temperatures, does get much better than this. Pretty mild right through the weekend. And of course, don't forget to download the Storm Team Weather app. It's the best way to keep up to date with our forecast. It's totally free. Go to the App Store and search for WICSWX. Coming up next, families giving back. How local parents are. Sometimes life doesn't go as planned, and that was the case for my family as we face not just a NICU journey, but also that of two of our triplets. Well, for some of us who have gone through the unimaginable, we find new purpose and a way to turn tragedy into hope. My family created Triple Heart Foundation, a nonprofit charity that delivers books and care packages to NICU families in Illinois and across the country. It's a way to honor triplets while giving back. They're leaving their legacy in a way that, you know, I don't think we ever would have imagined, especially back then when we, we had our kids. I, I think about them a lot, especially being around here. And the Badman family have also found a way to honor their daughter, Emmy, who spent time in the NICU but passed away at home at three months old. The family created the nonprofit Every Day for Emmy. It's really, it's hard, but at the same time, you know, we're keeping her memory alive. She's, she's here um, in spirit, so um, it's just important to us to, to do that. Thanks to their annual Trivia Night fundraiser, the foundation donates to several organizations, including St. John's Children's Hospital, where they created a program to help siblings in the NICU. To learn more about both charities, just head over to our website. As we head to break, let's take a live look over the capital city. This is the HSHS St. John's Hospital Tower Camera. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us for this special broadcast dedicated to prematurity awareness. It's something so many of us have experienced and you will these stories from this broadcast over on our website newschannel20.com. And that does it for us. World News is next and we'll see you back here at 6.